So another quick CD update. We've got the flash on because actually it's quite late. But you can see that finally the calendula has started to arrive. So this is citrus and we've got three maybe. And then this is snow princess. And again, they are not coming up as great seeds. You know, they don't look that healthy, to be honest. And as I said before, these seed packets are only a year old. So they shouldn't be in this state really. So I'm not impressed with those. Um, these are my gherkins and cucumbers. You can see we've got two that came up really quickly and have got quite leggy. Uh, these are starting to push their way up through now, which is good. So they are finally appearing. And then, oh look, there's one down here. So something is coming up there. Uh, spinach. So this is Apollo, uh, which is a great little spinach. And then let me show you my other spinach. Yeah. So it's funny how some things just come up and other things don't. So this is spinach medania. And you can see there are three young ones. So there's one, two, three. And I sowed two seeds in every single one of these. So the fact that there's only three come up is a bit random. Again, the rocket. This is a fresh packet of rocket. Not done very good. So there's something wrong with this seed tray. And then finally we have one sole little plant here, which I cannot remember what it is. But again, we were supposed, these were supposed to be my squashes. Nothing. So I'm gonna have to replant all of this. Oh, 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 wait. Actually, here is a squash. So this is sweet mix. So that's one of the squashes that's coming up now. Um, so we've got some stuff coming up and then I've been a bad boy and I still haven't got round to potting on all of these aubergines and peppers and the cucumber here. So I must get onto that ASAP and it's get really dusty in here because it's where I keep the ducks at night. And so you can see these really all need to go down to the, uh, the greenhouse to get potted on and get a good spray as well because they've got a lot of dust on their leaves. So we have new chicks. So these are actually the babies of um, Sunny. So one of my subscribers, Alana, rehomed Sunny with me, which was her cream leg bar cockerel. And I put him with some cream leg bar hens. And they, the five of them are the result. The sixth one is a little black Jersey giant. Seven actually hatched, um, although one had most of its entrails on the outside. So obviously that died. There still are two babies in the ink, uh, two eggs, sorry, in the incubator. Uh, there's no cheeping or peeping from inside them, but these were getting a little bit uh, cramped in that little Brinsley Octo 10, so I've decided to take them out. Now they are in the uh, the thing with the other babies, so you, obviously you've got bigger babies here, but I've made them their little uh, artificial hen, their heater hen, and I've made it so it's quite low, so they can scramble underneath, and these guys will probably leave them alone, but it's nice to have a few more chicks here. They're very cute. Oh, that's so sweet. So the Jersey Giants will be really, really big. And then obviously these cream leg bar chicks uh, are not pure, but uh, very cute. So hopefully we'll have lots of hens and we'll have some lovely colored uh, blue and olive egg uh, colors later on in the year. It's delivery time. I love a good delivery and I have been very kindly sent these tools. So I was in desperate need of uh, a new circular saw and a, a drill, uh, a combi drill that I can use up at the farm um, and we can kind of drill out fencing and we can put fencing up, um, you know, with batteries and things. And if you've never heard of them before, so Urbauer is Screwfix's home brand for tools. Um, and I've been using them a lot of work and they stand up to some pretty hardcore work. Um, and I've been really, really impressed with them. Uh, so Screwfix sent me these through so I could share them with you and kind of use them uh, on Brimwood Farm and get stuff going, which is very, very, very kind of them. Um, and I would really highly recommend them. So I've been using them for a while and I find they're really, really good. And they're not massively expensive, which is a nice thing. A lot of the tools, they're either cheap and cheerful and they break, or they're really, really expensive, unaffordable, and they just don't do the job. These, I find, are affordable, and they do do the job. Um, so obviously, you can see here, this is the, the, uh, the circular saw. I built um, some hatchery stuff at work with it, and it was amazing. Uh, cuts really, really well. I was very impressed. And then this, 
let's have a little look inside. Ooh. Okay, so this is the, uh, oh, the brushless combi drill. So even Bo likes it. So again, really, really good. It comes with the two, two of these lithium um, uh, batteries and they last a long time actually. It's a really, really, it's got good powerful, a uh, good powerful drill. Um, you can really drill it in the, uh, the screws really, really quickly. Um, I've got a bit of a drill set to come with it as well. So you'll be seeing me use these over the coming months and even years when I'm off at the farm, but I do highly recommend them because as I say, I have been using them and uh, they're really great. So I'm quite excited because once again, the incubators have gone on. So no sooner has the chicks hatched and they've gone out there to, uh, to grow up, I've got more babies coming. So if you look down here, here is our incubator and here are all of our eggies. Now this is quite exciting because these are the eggs that we're going to use for chick check. So if you remember last year we did a chick check where we hatched out uh, the chicks and we followed them uh, for I think three months. It was almost 12, 12 weeks I think from the chick and every week we had a check in with the chicks to see how they grew, how they feathered up, who was a boy, who was a girl. Uh, we had some Ixworth and some mixed bantams. These eggs have come out of the layer coop at the bottom. Um, so they are a mixture of Polans um, and an Iron Samani cross perhaps and some Silky Crosses, all with a Polan roaster. So that is quite exciting. I'm excited to see them hatch. So Chick Check will obviously be starting in about three weeks time uh, when they start hatching. And out of interest, there is a box here, and these are hatching eggs. And let me just open this up, and I can show you. They arrived yesterday, so they are resting. Look. So these are Himalayan monal pheasant hatching eggs. There's only two of them. Uh, they have been sent through the post. So I'm not entirely sure whether we will get uh, guaranteed hatches from these successful hatches because hatching eggs sent through the post aren't always that great and obviously we've only got two but they're going to be going in the incubator with some guinea fowl um, and they will be the last hatches of the year so uh, but for now they're sitting here getting ready and hopefully having their air sacs reattaching but for now we've got these in the incubator and growing hopefully to hatch out in three weeks time so it's gone the evening, and I thought I'd just bring you down to introduce you to Adam properly. Now he's settling in. He's settling in quite well. And one thing I will tell you, as a pheasant owner, don't let your pheasants escape. Uh, so we did actually, unfortunately, do that. Um, so we turned him two days, and he always sleeps. Look at him. He always sleeps on this little, this little ledge in the aviary. Um, but we'd gone to get fresh water, and we'd left this unlocked, because obviously, the birds in the aviary can't push this door open even when it's pushed too. However, he jumps up against the door and Saad came out to see him and he was halfway down the garden. Now luckily, because he is kind of a chilled out bird and he's been well handled, he didn't fly over the fence and um, I managed to walk down very slowly and throw a net over him and get him back. If that had been Eve, she would have been gone. Uh, so we obviously have got him back. Um, I can't remember whether I said the other day, but they did lay an egg. No, but um, Now Eve laid that egg. Can I focus it in there? It's too dark. They did lay an egg. Eve actually laid that egg though um, the day after we got him, so it won't be fertile. It's probably just the presence of Adam made her lay it. Um, but I'm going to leave him to go to sleep now because it has got dark. Well guys, you know what these mean? Empty uh, egg trays that can only mean one thing. The incubator's full. So this is the last hatch of the year, probably. We have our chick chick eggs in here. And this is the last hatch. We may do an Xworth hatch, but I think this is probably the last hatch of our year. And this is an interesting hatch. Um, so here we have two Himalayan monal pheasants. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six guinea fowl. Uh, these are guinea fowl of all different colours, so it's a potluck of what actually hatches out. And then here we have one, two, three, four silver pheasant. So 
they're basically game birds. Um, now, obviously, you know, we haven't got a vast amount of space here, so where am I going to put these game birds? And the answer is, I think I'm going to be putting in a uh, sort of a, a juvenile pheasant run in front of the greenhouse. So it's the bed where it's under the tree, it's shady, nothing ever really does really well there. The dogs run on there and go to the loo, so it's a waste of space. So I think I'm going to pop these eggs in, hatch them out, keep the juvenile chicks in there and with uh, pheasants especially they take kind of two years to mature anyway and you have to think of our time plan 18 months time we are hoping to be out of here and be up at the farm so by the time these are becoming adults and we need big adult pens for them separating them out we should have our 40 acres um, so this is the final hatch going on today. Now they take 28 days, so they're the same as ducks. Uh, so we're looking at almost a month, so we'll be into the beginning of June when these come out, maybe around my birthday. Uh, but that's the last hatch of the year. Fingers crossed it all works out. Well, it's the end of the week and I have a day off, so I have come to my favourite place, Brimwood Farm. So uh, we're in the uh, bluebell grove at the moment. You can see there's not a ton of bluebells, but we only started this a year ago. So you can just see there's little dots of blue. That is where our bluebells are starting to proliferate. The rest of it is a carpet of sycamore um, saplings. But they normally die off because they're crowded out by all of those leaves up there. But it is looking nice and I am glad to see that they are A, native bluebells, so we've got the correct bulb and hopefully they should start to seed themselves over the coming year. Again, when we come to this autumn, I'll put in some fresh bulbs so we get more and more every year. But it's just nice to see a little bit of blue. Kind of indicating what's to come in the future. So that is my lovely sunny Sunday and a great way to end the week. And there'll be a farm vlog coming sometime this coming week so you can see what I got up to uh, today. But for now, I'm going to go and enjoy life. Thank you.